Hello and welcome. I'm going to keep going with day 7,458 of the... <laughs> now, I think we're actually in the third millennia. This World Cup's taken that long. But today, we had... Well, it wasn't exactly a close game, but it got very interesting, but for all the wrong reasons. If you're Sri Lankan. Yeah, they break all sorts of records. Well, they including didn't. that this podcast is including that this podcast is going to be longer than Sri Lanka's innings. What? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And if they decided to bowl, but not if they'd carried on bowling the seamers. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, they they were at one point were in line for the lowest ever one day international score of thirty six, which is held by Canada. Yeah, which I mean, yeah, fair enough. The biggest defeat ever in a one day international is three hundred and seventy or something. But I don't think they were ever quite in line for that. But no. They, they've got, I think it's the fifth biggest ever one day international defeat by, uh, it's, I think it's the biggest by first tier nations or whatever. Yeah. It is one hell of a hiding. And to make yeah. matters even better, as Johnny pointed out in our group chat, Sri Lanka beat us. <laughs> Not just beat you, thumped you. <laughs> <laughs> if, if we'd have played against India today, how we played against Sri Lanka, we'd have got a minus score. <laughs> Is this like indoor cricket where you actually go yeah. backwards? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, <and> that, <laughs> yeah, like kids' pairs cricket. Each oh, time, yeah, each yeah. Time, if they, I reckon if they'd have carried on playing that as an innings, Sh- Sri Lanka could have got, because you say it's minus five, Sri Lanka are technically on, only on five. Yeah, so I reckon yeah. if they'd have bowled the full quota of overs, Sri Lanka could have got a minus number. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> which, which would have been astounding to watch. But just bonkers day, bonkers day. What, what, what did you think of the game, huge? So let's, let's talk about um, it on a slight positive. What did you think yeah. India's batting? Very good. I mean, I was quite surprised to see Rohit Sharma get skittled early doors. Off a, to be fair, a very good ball. <laughs> yeah. I think that settles the debate about who is the best opener in uh, the Cricket World Cup. Quinton de Kock is firmly in the first place right now. <laughs> Why? Because Rohit Sharma, to be fair, has exactly the same as Quinton de Kock did against England in this fixture. So, Yes, yes, yes. And he's still 140 runs ahead of him. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, I mean, the, the class of Shubman Gul and then Virat Kohli took over. Just so calm, collected. You know, saw at the the swinging ball early doors. Very disappointed to see both of them get out close to nineties. Mm. Um, the class of British Ayer then comes in. Absolutely, yeah. You know, I've 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 been very skeptical about Ayer for all sorts of seasons and reasons. And today, uh, he's made me firmly eat my words. I was thinking he's he's not got his place. I would have had, you know, Sumokai and uh, Sura Kumar Yadav in before him. And he looked like he didn't know which end of the bat to hold when he was batting. So he's not been great this yeah. tournament, to be fair, has he? He's probably the one person in that India side that you go right. He hasn't been in that's, great. That's where Hardik's coming in, right? I think. Well, you know, you, I mean, he gives them that fifth bowler option, doesn't he? he has sixth bowler option, sorry. If the if he does play there, yeah. For a, for not a big man, Shreyas Iyer hits the ball a very long way. I he mean, does, is it? He is it? I think he's two out of the top three for the longest sixes in the World Cup, one of which today was 106 yeah. metres. Yeah, yeah. Which I felt, I'll be honest, he was going, probably being a little bit hard done by because it went like a rocket. Yeah, and it got stopped by something. Yeah, the the third tier of the stand. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it was one hell of a, of a batting performance. Although I do, yeah. to be fair... Uh, Madashanka does look like a good bowler, tied leading wicket taker at the minute. Um, nah. That left arm seamer, they have, Sri Lanka have produced a couple of decent left arm seamers in the past, like nah. Charmin Devos being one of them. Um, the rest of their bowling didn't necessarily look the May West. And then the Indian seamers decided to put on an absolute swing and seam bowling exhibition. Yeah. I mean, Jasper Brummer set it up first ball of the game. I, that, I, that. I, I don't know. Michael Vaughan said it on the radio commentary. Every right hand, that's getting every right hander in the world out. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't even like think, I think yeah. even the Why dead you ones, review it? Even the dead yeah. ones wouldn't admit that. Like even with extraterrestrial powers from heaven, if you believe in that kind of thing, they wouldn't have laid a juke on it. Yeah. It's also the most pumped up I've seen Sri Raj. He was absolutely staring down the batsmen every time they played in mist and he walked right up to a few of them. And at one stage, I thought there was like, not, not Morse code, but a binary code is the word I was looking for. Because it was zero, one, zero, dot, one, one, zero. Dash, yeah. dot, dash. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Yeah, and that was just, that, that was the first innings when they were four, four wickets for three runs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, out of their top two, four, six, eight, only three of them got any runs and two of them got one. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean... Not great. The one thing I will say about Siraj is I do I do rate him. But it's all well and good getting fired up when the ball is decking around all over the place and you're not playing against the best side in the world. I think that is a bit dubious, if I'm being honest. Yes, he bowled very well. But it we all we all know it's easy to get fired up on a green one when it's seeming round. You, you want Indian fans, once they get over this sheer jubilance of this ridiculous bowling performance might sit and go come the next round for example if it is a bit flatter and they're playing against maybe a south africa or whatever in the semi and do you want and maybe south africa have got a reasonable start they're 120 for 120 for two off 25 overs is siraj going to be as fired up then you hope he would yeah. be you hope he yeah. would be and as an Indian fan, you'd, you'd like to see that. Him running in, bowling like that. I know it's slightly different conditions, but no doubt he's very talented. And, mm. and but, but I mean, the poor left-hander, Chartigas Lanka, was getting the death stares from all death scare, and he's, he's on one off 24 balls. And he goes up next over, unfortunately, to Mohammed Shami, caught to Ravinder the day, at point, which yeah. is one of Shami's another wickets i mean how did they how did, how did they drop him i don't understand how shami did not make do you reckon he's even talking to the selectors still <laughs> yeah. just, he's just doing that at them constantly yeah exactly as they walk yeah. past yeah just... i mean he's played three games he's now sixth leading wicket taker to the other guys that have played seven games or six games and he has the fine average of just over six runs they're going for 94 runs in total. How the hell did he not get selected for the beginning of the World Cup? I mean, it's uh, we thought we had some selection problems. Well, uh, I mean, surely that brings people into question more when they're not picking that bloke. I mean, we can't get a man to take a wicket. <laughs> but, <laughs> they're just thinking, well, yeah, we'll leave him on the bench. Yeah, yeah. So I made a I made a really bold statement last night that this is pre the Sri Lanka. Oh, I don't even know what it's called on Super Brew. It's not a thrashing. It's a it's a triple quadruple thrashing. Yeah, three hundred runs. Yeah, it's three it's three it's three thrashings. <laughs> that I think South Africa will beat India two out of three times. I now think it's two out of four times after today's <laughs> performance. <laughs> I mean. That's now India through. I think yes. that's pretty much nailed on. Have a shifty look at the table. Um, well, South Africa are through yeah, as well, aren't they? No, uh, technically not. Technically not. Yeah. Afghanistan can still catch them. They can. The other, I mean, we can go on to talk about it. We, we, we could wax lyrical about that Indian performance for a very, very long time, but it, it was phenomenal. We are starting to get down to the business end. Very much so. Of this World Cup now. And, well, England went out of business, unfortunately. They filed for insolvency. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, can we just start? I mean, yeah. tomorrow's game's huge, right? Because it's 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 Afghanistan versus the Netherlands. So if, Af if Afghanistan win that, they move up to eight points. Admittedly, their net run rate, unless they absolutely destroy the Netherlands by yeah, a they're... million runs... That's not going to happen. I think they're going to go fifth tomorrow. Yeah. So that's well, yeah, that's what if, I think. Yeah, Afghanistan can go fifth. You'd probably say that's where they're going to end up after tomorrow, like you say, unless they absolutely batter the Dutch. Well, I suppose that could happen, but I just can't see Afghanistan getting enough runs 
to make that big a drastic a change to their net run rate. I think it'll obviously go in the right direction, but whether it goes far enough, we won't know. The real business games come on Saturday and Sunday. I don't know if you've seen. It's New Zealand versus Pakistan is the first game. It's a double header on Saturday. Yeah. So New Zealand versus Pakistan. The permutations for Pakistan to go ahead of New Zealand is they need to beat them by 83 runs if they bat first or win within 15 overs if they want to go ahead of them. Yeah. The second game is England versus Australia. And England have the opportunity to cause a bit of havoc in that Australian yeah. run. So that, that's Saturday's games. And then on Sunday, it's India versus South Africa. So what a cracking weekend of cricket. I mean, you'd arguably say that those are three games that prior to, irrespective of where people, the teams were sitting within the log, those are three games that you'd be up for watching. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And you, you also got to think about those massive permutations on them. Like you say, it's, it's South Africa pull up performance out against India, all of a sudden it's tied at the top. Um, you then start to get towards run rate. I think, but, well, unless Australia finish fourth, I mean, you, you're going to have to say, you know, that fourth place, if New Zealand scraping, you'd probably say you're at advantage finishing. Oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Because if you get Pakistan, if Pakistan do scrape past New Zealand, in the thing they're you know going to be a speaking to a couple team. of work. Yeah, I've spoken to a couple of work colleagues and they've given me the permutation that it's going to be India versus New Zealand and it's going to be South Africa versus Australia and it's going to be a South Africa, India, sorry, a South Africa, New Zealand final. Because if there's one team that can beat India, they think it's New Zealand. And this is a, an Indian colleague. So it was interesting listening to him say that. Now you could say, well, hang on, the reason he's saying that is because he's trying to dumb down, you know, when you've got yeah. so much expectation on the side, he's trying to just, you know, layer it down or sort of level it down. But it's interesting listening to, to the different thoughts that other people have. You know, we talk about this every day. It's listening, interesting listening to other people, you know, provide their thoughts. In. And just, if anybody else has got any thoughts, by the way, use the Spotify. If you are listening on Spotify, there's a question and answer section. Give it a go. You know, we'll publish them and we'll bring them up on the podcast. Well, I think the bigger game for me would be, I can see, I said this the other night to Jono, New Zealand, that was a big game for them yesterday. Yeah. And they got battered. They won the first four, they've lost the next three. They're in that kind of downward spiral. If they can arrest that, I give them like fair play. I can see Pakistan getting past them. I really can. Um, well, did you listen to yesterday's episode about they've only got 11 fit players yeah. and one of them is Jimmy Neesham, who's got a broken hand or a sore hand or something like that. Yeah. And yeah, I, I just can't see, I can't see where their wins are going to come from. Um. Their bowling attack looks oh, kind of toothless now, especially with no Henry. Southie doesn't look fit, which I know you guys mentioned yesterday. Bolt's clearly a spearhead. Nishams now have now has to bowl yeah, as that yeah. kind of next option. And then they've just got spinners everywhere. But if you look at this tournament so far, yes, Santa's bowled well, got lots of wickets. But but it's now the seamers that are starting to come into it a little bit more and, and take more wickets. So no, Maharaj would think differently, by the way, taking a but, ball for yeah, I mean, you've got you've got this the three, haven't you? Really, you've got Maharaj, you've got the leggy from Australia that I can never remember his name. Zampa, Zampa, yeah. and then Santa are the three that have yeah. kind of the three spinners. But then you look at the rest, and it's all Bumra, Shine Shah, Freedy, uh, is up there. Like, you've got there's loads of seamers, yeah, the there's just so many seamers up there, yeah, yeah. exactly. So I think for me, that's interesting. I can see, and I tell you what, a semi-final that would be, unless you're a Pakistan cricketer, is India-Pakistan in that semi-final. And you, would, you, couldn't, you couldn't put it past Pakistan. To, can you imagine being a Pakistan cricketer, being more fired up for a game in front of 130,000 people for, for a World I think Cup whoever's in that other semi-final would be supporting Pakistan because they definitely don't want to play against India in a final. <laughs> well, no. No other reason. Not No no allegiances or anything like that. It's no. just, I don't want to play against India in a final. No. But that would be that would be a hell of a result for Pakistan given where they've been. Yeah. And yeah, it wouldn't uh, surprise you know me at all to see that. It wouldn't yeah, surprise me at totally all. Totally agree. 
do you know what? After this weekend, there's no real big games that I think are going to make a difference. I mean, it's Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, Australia, England, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Sri Lanka, possibly South Africa, Afghanistan, Australia, Bangladesh, England, Pakistan, India, Netherlands, and then 15th of November we start with the the, the semi-finals. You'd say potentially there's no like real Eng- England Pakistan game potentially. Yeah, like when when you're talking about those guys that potentially finish in fourth, I'd say the other three now: England, India, South Africa, Australia. There. Yeah, I agree. Especially yeah. with who Australia have got. In what England? Of, you know, they play. Yeah, they're playing England this week. Yeah, they're playing England, but then they have, you'd argue that, okay, they, they're possibly going to beat Afghanistan. You'd back them to beat that and you'd back them to beat Bangladesh. Yeah. So, I mean, even if England beat them, I still think they'll be, you know, up yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. So, and here so we were mocking them at the beginning of the tournament going, shall Qantas here pick them on the way back with the Wallabies? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean. They're, it they're, should have been they're... British Airways. Well, yeah, <laughs> they do. They do that. They, they, there's, there's that Star Alliance thing in there. They, I'm sure they could work it out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, cool. But no, so it starts getting a little bit exciting. Not necessarily in terms of competitiveness of games. We've had the two. They all they might be it. But in terms of permutations of what sides can do, what is starting to get a little bit exciting. So, so yeah, here's on to a bit of a weekend of cricket. Sounds good. Catch you then. Cheers, Robert. See you later, man. Bye.